Hi guys, uh, Steve Fields and Boo back here once again at Blackpool Pleasure Beach for another fun filled, I can't even speak, fun filled instalment. Uh, so today, uh, just kind of mix things up a little bit so we don't get the same vlog every single time. I was meant to be going to all the towers today, but um, uh, I've been uh, absolutely knackered, so uh, there's no chance that I was going to do a two hour drive down there today. So, uh, and also, uh, it's just me today because. Um, Robin's a little bit bumpy in her car, nothing to worry about, but uh, she's going to go and see a physio because she's a little bit sore. So it's just me today. Uh, so we're going to be going into uh, the nuts and bolts of uh, all the rides, getting into the history, uh, uh, to see if we can marathon some rides and uh, hopefully try some new foods. I'm not anticipating it's going to be overly busy today, so uh, uh, there, there might not be all the outlets open. So we'll see what there is and um, we'll get into all the uh, uh, nuts and bolts of the rides and try and get into some of the history and delve into that and do something a little bit different here. Uh, on thrills and food. So uh, stay with us uh, for a fun filled day out here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. One of the iconic attractions here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach is the Ark. You can just see behind me there uh, Noah's Ark. That was, of course, it's not always been the main entrance to Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, some of you might actually remember when it was actually a ride. And it was a funhouse style attraction. It was built in 1922 and you can actually see the mechanisms inside as you actually enter the park. So if you've not seen it before and you've wondered what it was, that is the mechanism that's still rocking the boat today. And what used to be in there was all sorts of wobbly floors, uh, moving walkways and uh, it's, it's sadly closed in 2008. There is still one uh, existing uh, one that's very similar to this that exists in Kennywood in uh, the USA so if anybody's uh, over there that's what this place here behind me was uh, when it was uh, an operating attraction of course now it does just uh, uh, operate as the entrance to the park sadly but um, it is one of those iconic um, rides and attractions here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach so yeah so that starts off the day that is the entranceway that is formerly known as Noah's Ark so stay with us we discover some more rides here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach of course behind me, what you can just see right there, is Sir Hiram Maxon's Flying Machines. That is the original ride that was here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. That is the oldest continually operating ride here. Um, well, on look, on longest continually operating ride in all of Europe actually. So it's a marvellous piece of history. Not only that is, we've got rockets on there now, but originally there actually used to be cars that were on there. So it has changed a little bit over the years, but the actual mechanisms, what makes it move, is the original mechanism that is uh, still in there. All moved on flywheels and very much Victorian engineering. It's an absolutely uh, incredible feat of engineering, really, to think that that's nearly, uh, well, 100 years old. Um, so it's an incredible ride, and um, it's one that I'll be going on shortly. Uh, yeah, so that is Sir Hiram Maxim's flying machine. So it's much more than just uh, uh, been a similar rip-off to uh, 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 the Orbiter and Spinners at Disney. Uh, it's an incredible ride, and it's one that uh, gives you a great view of the park as well. Uh, and, and also, uh, right behind me here, it gives you a great view into what's going to be going on here. Um, so in Valhalla, of course, because that's going to be coming in the summer. So it's really, really interesting to get a view straight into there and see what's going on.
So that is Sir Hiram Maxim's fly machines. Bizarrely, it looks all serene, like a nice gentle ride around, but um, as it's still a self-contressed coast, coaster chicken, bit of a plug there, um, I, that's, that terrifies me more than any other ride here at Blackpool Pledge, please believe it or not. Don't know why, don't know what it is, there's something about that. Um, uh, I'd rather go on the, the big one icon, um, whatever we've got here that's uh, uh, a so-called thrill ride, uh, over the top of that, I don't know why, it just terrifies me. But behind me now, what you can see is, is Valhalla, the iconic Intamin log flume that's here. Um, uh, incredible ride. It's one, one that I'm absolutely uh, beyond myself waiting for. I cannot wait for the summer for this ride to open. As you can see, there's still a lot of work going on. We've got all the scaffolding that's up there. There's a lot of work going on. We're still not sure what um, it exactly is that's going to be in there. We know they're working with the Noble Stranger. Uh, we know there's going to be a mixture of different effects that's going on there. Hopefully, nothing's changed too drastically, but one thing I am excited for is just to get on it and experience it again. And hopefully, you won't get as worse as what you did before, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a great ride is Valhalla, so uh, that's one thing we cannot wait for it to get back on there. So fingers crossed that won't be too long and uh, we can all get back on there and enjoy uh, the best water ride in the country. The thing about Blackpool Pleasure Beach is it opened in 1896, so it's been open a very, very long time. And incredible to think that it's been in the same family all those years. So in WGB, I think it was, that uh, was the original um, person that's opened this park and then it's been in the Thompson family ever since. It's an absolutely incredible feat. Not many parks can really say that, uh, that it's still part of a, a true family um, tradition this park and it's absolutely incredible and as regards to what's behind me there Alice in Wonderland that is just um, uh, it's, it's amazing really because when Walt Disney came uh, looking for ideas for his park to open um, uh, Disneyland in California he actually came to Blackpool Pleasure Beach and he became friends with um, the Thompson family I think it was Leonard Thompson that he was actually uh, sparse for friendship with and from there was how they managed to get the rights to be able to incredibly to build um, and use the name of Alice in Wonderland to build this ride so and it still stands today built in 1962 um, by Arrow Dynamics it's another Arrow one they've got quite a few Arrows here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach um, it's, it's changed a little bit throughout the years we've got spilt uh, smell pods that have been put in there now so but um, yeah it's a great ride and I'm going to go on there and uh, take a ride on it now because there's no queue so uh, join me on Alice in Wonderland history and nostalgia of this ride is absolutely, it's absolutely incredible so uh, join me here at Alice in Wonderland it's all the glow in the dark stuff there one thing I don't know is uh, where this music actually comes from um, so we will know it has been from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory um, it's been here since 1962 so it's been a similar time Alice. It's a Domingo's head as a golf club. Once again, a chess. Red eyed dog. There goes a dog. Big lion. what they actually are. I'm not sure relevance is bears, but it really smells delicious though around here. Absolutely gorgeous. We're on the uphill section.
Okay, behind me here is the Derby Racer, built in 1959. There's 56 horses on here, this uh, carousel which goes around. But don't be uh, underestimated, because they go very, very quickly as they go around this uh, carousel uh, with an organ uh, over the side, which is still uh, the original one, uh, which they got from uh, Belgium, I think it is, in Antwerp. Um, and if you watch the previous log, you'll see how we were discussing with the actual operator how it's becoming increasingly difficult to actually maintain this because it's used uh, with a sheet of paper so it's fed through uh, and actually reads all sorts of different sorts of music. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a great ride and uh, so don't under underestimate it because it, it does go quite quickly as it whizzes around this circular tra uh, so it's track. It's like a carousel effectively, but it just goes on horses quite quickly in a circle. Uh, enjoy the footage. Okay, next up is my favourite of all ghost trains, and that is the ghost train here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It's incredible, it opened in 1930. Originally, of course, it was just a single deck uh, ghost train. And then, in 1936, Joseph Edmonton redesigned it and put a second floor on it and, and made it the ghost train that we know it is today. It's had all sorts of features changed over the years, but one thing that's changed is it's still an awesome ghost train. Of course, this ghost train is believed to be actually haunted as well by the ghost of a, an employee that worked here that went by the name of Cloggy because uh, the foot, they can hear the footsteps of the clogs uh, of him uh, stepping up and down uh, when workers are working in there. So, am I going to see Cloggy today? Let's find out as we go on the ghost train. Of course, this part here is part that's relatively uh, new in terms of theming. This stuff uh, obviously isn't the original uh, features of the Ghost Train. And this part just brings back memories. It's like an Iron Maiden album. Those faces are there. They're obviously. They were part of uh, a ride the greatest show on earth. In uh, 2004, this did actually feature in uh, Most Haunted, where they spent the night here uh, investigating whether there was all paranormal activity of Cloggy. Now, as we come around to this bit, how many people have been made to jump by this beast here? Here he is. I think adding that drop's one of the best things that they've done here on the ghost train. It's, it makes it what it is. Great ghost train. downstairs. The question is, are we going to get sea cloggy or get any activity down here? There's the exorcist. Trains come in. It's like another old Iron Maiden album cover there. Skeletons on a bike. I've never really understood skeletons on a bike. It's quite cool though. I just don't really get it. Make yourself the noise. 
Okay, that is the ghost train. Worth noting, of course, that um, that wasn't always its location, and it's not what it's always looked like. The facade was built in 1976. That's when the skeleton was added, and you got the train on the top, uh, and that's when it really became the ghost train that we know today. Of course, and it did actually used to be further down, so where the Wild Mouse is, or what, what's known as the Hub now, um, that was the original location for it. It was moved when it was given the uh, double-decker uh, track. So, um, yeah, that is the ghost train here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Now behind me is impossible. Now that is something that was two attractions that was made into one. It used to be a thousand and one troubles, which is the mirror maze, and it was also the haunted swing, which is a madhouse effectively. And uh, what they did is they amalgamated them into one to make one attraction, which is impossible. It's a, it's a decent little madhouse. Unfortunately, the, uh, the haunted swing's not actually working at the moment, so uh, I'm not going to work my way through the thousand and one troubles of the uh, mirror maze. So uh, uh, we'll leave it at that. But that's impossible when it's working. The haunted swing. Good little madhouse. Um, it's quite a small one, it's quite confined. It's not like Hex, uh, which is a really big um, room, really, and it's like the monster party. Um, it's, it's a much more tight, confined space, but excellent nonetheless. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go head over to uh, the River Caves and uh, uh, we'll discover some more about the history of that place. I'm here at the River Caves, just behind me here, the River Caves, formerly known of course as the River Caves of the world, uh, and it's something that's believed to have what's it, been uh, the inspiration behind uh, Walt Disney creating uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, so when you go Pirates of the Caribbean, um, think of this ride, because it really is, the nostalgia on this is absolutely phenomenal, I think it was first uh, created in 1905, uh, it's, it's phenomenal, it's a series of boats that go through, uh, different cultures and idioms and uh, uh, scenarios and it's I think it's one of my favorite dark rides here in the country if not uh, beyond that this it's it's absolutely phenomenal so I'm gonna go on um, River Caves formerly River Caves of the world there has been some change throughout the years uh, there did used to be a big pirate ship believe it or not it was actually on, on the water just behind me that's no longer here sadly uh, but most of the other things um, and features are still there which is absolutely great it's been a little subtle change throughout the years updating it and making it relevant but it's still the river caves so join me as i go on the river caves one thing i'm keen to understand is uh, the nostalgia that i feel for this park yeah, and the rides really like good. the river caves are absolutely phenomenal incredible i absolutely love this park i love this ride and Anybody who's not from uh, here or didn't grow up coming to Blackpool Place Beach, do you still feel the same nostalgia that I feel when I go on this ride? Because I appreciate if you're not from uh, the background of coming to here as a child, it might look, I don't know, does it look tacky, does it look um, not very well done? Because to me, this is history, this is my childhood right here, um, and it's amazing to be able to come through and still see it pretty much perfectly intact and being looked after and a fantastic, amazing piece of history. I think without rides like this, we wouldn't have uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. It's amazing. subtle updates throughout the years but it's still holding the same charm it's not lost any of the uh, nostalgia I just hear that music it gives me goosebumps it just takes me back to being a child because it it's, incidentally when they used to have the River Caves at uh, Southport Pleasureland it had the same music as well so if you don't remember that um, the music was the same and some of the artifacts when that actually closed it came here As well, years ago, sadly it's not open now, where we can see the twinkling stars on the ceiling there, if you can just make them out. Uh, that ceiling didn't used to be there, and there used to be a restaurant that was just seated just above the um, um, where those twinkling stars are. That wasn't a ceiling before, that was just, uh, you could look up and there were people having a lunch in a restaurant, which is the one where the bubble waffle is now. So it's, it's, um, it's a shame that's not operating now, because um, it was really nice and 
you can see where places like um, in Disney, the Epcot Pavilion, when you go into Mexico and you have the boat ride and the restaurant next to it, where they kind of got their ideas from because um, it, it's a great idea, it's fantastic. And it's a shame it's not operating anymore. As we go into the Valley of the Kings. On the west bank of the Nile stand the temples of the Abu Simbe. They remained unknown to the outside world until their discovery in 1813. Built by the Egyptian king Ramses II, these colossal statues are the most spectacular example of the art of ancient Egypt. thinking how massive these were as a child coming through here and they are they're really big and then you see the little opening and then we're always thinking there's no way we're going to fit through it that's tiny carved out of the sandstone cliff on the west bank of the nile stand the temples of the abu Simbel. they remain unknown to the outside world until their discovery Look, I don't know why these boats don't have a back on them, I'll never know. So I love this jungle feature part as well, right at the end. Excellent. And then stolen from another channel here where uh, it really is being booked on. Ready for a big drop? It's a shame that uh, pirate ship's not there anymore. That is the river case. I can't speak highly enough about that ride. It's an absolutely phenomenal dark ride. Uh, never loses this charm. It's absolutely amazing. Um, still does exactly what it did. Um, just the same job as it did when it opened for me. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, so uh, that is the river caves, formerly of the river caves of the world. So now I can see uh, Big Dipper in the distance and uh, we'll get to the nuts and bolts of that ride. And that is the Big Dipper here at Blockwood Pleasure Beach. So I'm here, you can see the Big Dipper behind me here. It's built in 1923, so it's quite an old ride now. It's coming up for 100 years old, however, what we've got today isn't the original uh, attraction in the sense that it was extended in 1936 when uh, Blackpool Pleasure Beach acquired uh, another bit of land. So of course, Watson Road, which is the road that runs right way through the centre of the park, uh, they acquired a, the land that's on the other side of the park, but the park where you see the big, dip, uh, the big one now. Uh, so once that was acquired, uh, they extended the Big Dipper further on down to where the Big Blue Hotel is today uh, and that's when it became what it is. So that is the Big Dipper here and I'm going to go and uh, ride this thing now, nearly 100 years old, let's see how it's doing today. there is the uh, before going on it's riding incredibly well by the way uh, was the double chain lift so it actually has two chain lifts but it's the same one that's kind of linked around anyone that's done the uh, walk the woody uh, will, will have experienced that so basically it pulls you up the first uh, bit you go around the side of the lake where infusion is and then once you've done that you go up to the main lift hill up to the top where you go around the teardrop or onion up to you uh, message below watch you the comments below tell me a few things a teardrop or an onion. Me personally, I think it's a nice gem, but there we go. So 
Yeah, that is the Big Dipper here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Also, uh, one last thing on the, the Big Dipper, uh, I remember his name this time, Richard Rodriguez. Richard Rodriguez spent 1,000 hours on this ride. Uh, now that's a hell of an achievement. Now I'm thinking about doing some marathon later on on Icon, but it's certainly not going to be 1,000 hours. Might be an hour, maybe, we'll see. But um, yeah, so Richard Rodriguez, kudos to him for managing 1,000 hours on that ride, because that's incredible. Well done. And uh, now I'm just going to head round to see some more historic rides here at Blossom Pleasure Beach. Blossom Beach. Stay with me to find out the history. behind me there, Avalanche, that is one of three the uh, steel bobsled uh, coasters that Mac designed and this was the third of them that was opened in 1998, sorry 1998, 1988 by uh, Eddie the Eagle of all people, remember the uh, the ski jumper that uh, was in the Winter Olympics uh, all those time, if you don't, I'm old, don't worry about it, anyway that guy opened them, um, it's, it's still a decent family coaster and for anyone who's a kid or anyone just starting out in roller coasters, someone's scared of heights, someone who's a coaster chicken, this ride you can do. There's no drops in it, it's not particularly high. Um, I am a coaster chicken, I go on most stuff granted, yeah, pretty, well I go on pretty much anything, um, but this is one that is suitable for everyone and it's the first one that we really took Casper on um, and he really enjoys this. So um, that is Avalanche here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It's a great ride, it's an enjoyable ride, so join me as I go on it. Unfortunately, uh, as always, I can't I can't film on ride, I asked permission, but not allowed, given an outright right no, so unfortunately you just have to make do with the off-ride footage, but uh, um, I'll give you uh, my review as I come off and I'll show you some of the off-ride stuff as always again. So that is Avalanche here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. the classic avalanche here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Riding really well today. I'd wait a few minutes to get into the station, um, but it's a nice quiet day today. Can't complain at all. Um, especially, uh, top tip for anybody who's not got a season pass, anybody who's coming for a day trip, get on avalanche first. The turnover on this ride is not the best. So that's just the nature of how the rides are made up, so you can only get one person in the car. Uh, maybe two, but if they're on their own, uh, then you're gonna have to wait. But um, yeah, so uh, top tip, come here first, uh, get that out of the way, avoid the queues. Because right, uh, while everyone else has got headed over to Icon, Icon's got a fantastic turnover. Uh, the ops on that are always incredible. Big one, get loads of people on there, don't head there. Uh, head to Avalanche, get out of the way. Next up, I'm going to go to uh, Revolution. Join me there. Now I'm outside Revolution, not much to say about this ride. First looping coaster in Europe. Uh, another Arrow uh, coaster, they've got a few of them here. Uh, incredible one. Uh, the most intense ride here in my opinion at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Let me know your thoughts on the comments below. Um, but yeah, um, you go forwards, you go backwards. Very simple, very intense. Let's get on with it. Let's ride Revolution. Okay, next up is Steeplechase. I've spoken about this one before. It opened in 1977 by Red Rum. In fact, on the exit, there's even a hoof print from Red Rum when Red Rum officially opened it. I don't know if Red Rum uh, actually went on it. I don't know. Can a horse go on it? Horse ride a horse? Either way, I don't know. But we can get on it. So you're on a horse-shaped uh, coaster if you're not familiar with it. It's on a single rail uh, that you go around. It's the only one uh, in the world of its kind still left. So it's so unique to be able to get on this. It's a little bit, it can be a little bit rough in places. You get sore hips or you get thrown around. Uh, but it's, it's so unique that you have to, you have, if you come here, you've got to go on it. Quite often there's a, a bit of a wait for this ride because the turnover isn't the best, but um, it, it is really fun. And um, yeah, so, so it, Aerodynamics um, made this. Like, it's, you know in this park, it's either gonna be Arrow or it's gonna be Mac, generally speaking, who's designed the ride. So uh, let's get on it and uh, I'll give you some review when I come off here at Thrills and Food at Bottle Blade Beach. Okay, talking about extinct uh, attractions, one thing they used to have is here, this building behind me used to house uh, an indoor uh, dark coaster, which is named as Space, Space Invader, and it's formerly known as Space Invader 2. 
Um, and uh, that was closed in 2008. So that's no longer here anymore. And that building is what's kind of served as a, a big restaurant in the Nickelodeon land now. So of it's no longer here. Um, but people who are familiar with Breen Theme Park might uh, well recognise where this coast has gone because that's where it's been relocated to. It's now at Breen Theme Park. So sadly it's not here anymore. So we would have had 11 coasters here, but uh, we'll make do with the 10. It's still uh, uh, a great effort here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. But yeah, that was uh, Space Invader here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Now the origins of my next coaster go back to 1909 when it was first built and it was known then as the Velvet Coaster and it was accessed from Watson Road which is the road that runs right the way through the centre of Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Now that's why I've got so many hills and ramps and stuff to go over that's compensate for that because we can't have a, uh, a public access road that runs right through, through a, um, a theme park so uh, they've built all sorts of rumps and, uh, humps and underpasses to counter that. Now what happened is that ride was actually dismantled in 1932 and a lot of the existing parts were used to build what was known as the roller coaster that was here in 1932 so uh, and that's changed over the years and then it became uh, the Nickelodeon streak it was painted orange which is the ride that we see today right here so it's an incredible feat really that 1909 and, and a lot of the original parts are still what's uh, operating this ride today uh, and what used to actually have part of the old velvet coaster in the station which was really really cool but um course that's not here anymore i'm not sure where that's gone whether it's been sold whether it's gone to a museum um i hope it's been looked after somewhere because it's a really cool uh, bit of history but yeah that is the nickelodeon streak i'm gonna go and have a run on it now so uh, uh, again apologies i can't film on ride but i'll uh, give him a reaction when i come off so nick streak um roller coaster velvet coaster whatever you call it that's this ride and i'm going on it now yeah good old flush fashion woody here uh, nick streak um Roller coaster, roller coaster, yeah, it's, it's a great ride, definitely. Um, I'm not sure the person in front of me agreed because uh, they were throwing the guts up as they came off, but yeah, absolutely great, Woody. Um, nothing special about it, it's just a wooden coaster. It does exactly what it's meant to do. Um, yeah, let's see what else we can find here at Rockwell Place Beach. So the next ride in terms of the history of Blackpool Pleasure Beach is Walton and Gromit's Thrillomatic. Of course, it's not always been Walton and Gromit's Thrillomatic. It did originally start life in 1971 as the gold train, the gold mine train, which I absolutely loved it. And I was quite, I was quite good when that was closed. And then uh, in 2013, they put in Walton and Gromit, um, which it's an absolutely great ride. It's not the most reliable, I will say that, but, it, but it's an absolutely great ride. Um, and the fact that it was opened by Amanda Thompson and of course Nick Park, who's of course a local lad as well, so uh, they opened this ride. So um, it's really, really fun. So I'm going to see if it's open now, try and get a ride on it. And that is Walton Gromit's Thrillomatic here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Yeah, just come off Walton Gromit's Thrillomatic. No bad news to tell you about that. It's running uh, today perfectly fine. Uh, so yeah, coming come midweek um, term time is absolutely amazing. Just straight on everything, it's great. Um, it's, it's incredible to think that that ride was £150,000 when it was first built. Now, I don't know how much the original mechanisms are still uh, what's in play there, because it's the same track, uh, the same layout as when uh, it was the, uh, the gold mine. But um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a really good fun ride, and especially anybody that loves Walton Gromit. Uh, it's, it's great. And uh, uh, I got home my apprehensiveness when it changed over from the gold mine to uh, Walton Gromit. So uh, let's find some more rides. Next up is a coaster that's taken the crown for being the best woody in the park for me here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, and that's Grand National since it's free track. Uh, it's absolutely great. It's, it's the only Mobius Loop coaster, uh, wooden coaster in the country, and there's not many of them left in the world, to be honest with you. Of course, uh, I always say it, it's one critic, there's one continuous uh, um, uh, coaster. 2004, it was uh, uh, damaged by fire, and it, I think uh, there was a lot of consensus that thought it was going to be the end for the ride. And nearby was Trauma Towers was uh, damaged. And I'm not sure if actually opened again afterwards, Trauma Towers or not. And it's a shame because that is a it was a really fun ride, it was like a spinning ride that was inside. And you had a little bit of a walk through it before you went into it. Um, but yeah, um, it's, this is a really good uh, wooden coaster. So um, this is the Grand National. Enjoy. Yeah, so I've just come off the Grand National there. Perhaps not the best idea to go on that after eating six donuts. 
a bit queasy. It felt a bit rough actually on that ride then. Um, not like the previous two rides I've had this season, which is really sad. Um, a bit jarring on my back on the, uh, the drops. It was a back row ride, so it's bound to be a bit more airtime, but I was stapled into my seat. So I don't know if that made a bit of a difference. I wasn't able to come up forward out of my seat, but yeah, uh, still a great ride. So that is the Grand National here at Bottle Ridge. Right, I talked about marathoning. Um, so there's only one ride that I want to marathon here, and that is Icon. This is ride one. It's my favourite ride in the United Kingdom, as everybody knows, if you know me by now. So uh, yeah, let's get this over with Icon. Let's see how many I can do in the next hour. That's it, I managed nine goes on Icon uh, in one hour. Incredible, considering there's only one train operating as well today. There's a lot of stock to start with that. There it goes again, incredible. Um, there's not many rides where you can actually say you can go on it nine times in a row and not feel any form of sick or nausea. It's absolutely incredible. So the, uh, so the camera, uh, the battery has died uh, and I foolishly didn't uh, charge up the second battery so uh, I've had to revert to my phone now so uh, uh, hopefully the quality is not too bad and you're picking up the audio on this alright. Yeah, getting nine rides on it, um, Icon is absolutely phenomenal. It's such a good ride and to be able to ride that nine times in a row and not feel any fucking noise is just amazing. So yeah, that is Icon. Okay, so uh, camera's run out of battery. Uh, I'm doing it on my phone. I didn't want to do it out there because I thought that the uh, wind noise would just pick up on this microphone, something chronic. So uh, I'm completely windswept now. Um, what a good day. It's been a, a great day, really, getting into uh, a lot of the history of Blackpool Pleasure Beach and um, getting into the reasons why I love this park and why Robin loves this park and why it's such a big fundamental part of our childhood and uh, why we've carried this on and why we love this park so much. Um, we're going to be back here next week. I just want to say um, massive thank you for watching. Massive thank you for uh, um, following us, subscribing to us. Uh, anyone that's uh, been with us for a while will uh, know what we're about. And uh, anyone new, thank you very much. I just want to say uh, we really, really appreciate it. We'll be back here next week and it'll be a family vlog next week. So uh, that'll be something different again. So hopefully we've managed to do something um, a bit different today to what's been in the previous ones as well. So I hope you've uh, uh, enjoyed it and I hope you're enjoying our content as well. So I just want to say thank you very much. Really, really appreciate everyone that watches, likes, subscribes. And also, um, if anybody, uh, I just want to say if anybody is struggling, anyone's uh, in need, um, uh, message us. Uh, you, you're never alone. There is always someone who's uh, willing to listen and I'm willing to be that person as well. So I just want to say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart and uh, I'll see you in the next vlog. Until then, uh, just ride it out. Thank you.